Bowls to one. Michael Reisinger, Yap Stam, Arthur Newman and Dennis Bergkamp are the players who come in. Stan Fox has been uh, dropped. Winston Bogard is injured. Vyotlau goes to the bench and Johnny Cruyff also out for injury. Very strong, very experienced Netherlands side, Tommy. Well, this is probably as good as the Netherlands are going to get. And the fact that they've Bergkamp come back and, of course, Seedorf, I mean, a man who can dictate any game, like one of the best players in the world. Well, that's the... Uh, Lineup for the Netherlands, and let's have a look now at the Welsh lineup. They've made three changes, perhaps the most significant, Tommy. Number four, Vinnie Jones from Wimbledon. Not only is he in the Welsh seat, he's also the captain today. Well, one of the crazy gang has finally made it big time, and Vinnie Jones very happy. But I think the biggest loss that Wales are going to suffer today is Mark Hughes up front. He's suspended today. The man who supplies a lot of power for them, and it'll be interesting to see how to go without him. Yes, that country. Jones. I'm not quite sure what his Portuguese is like, but uh, since we're having quite a conversation there, Tommy, with the referee. Well, if they had taken him, he probably would have ended up playing with him, Mike. He wanted to play with any international team, and uh, Wales has become his adopted country, and now here he is captaining in Wales. So anything is possible in this old game, isn't it? Wales in a change trip today of green and white was hitting the coach of the Netherlands, who was in his 14th appearance today. It is 8 degrees. The weather is clear, the field is in good condition. It looks absolutely immaculate, doesn't it, Tommy? Yes, it certainly does. There's no excuse for not playing good football on this field. It's a very compact stadium, 31 and a half thousand people. It's sold out today, so uh, the Dutch will have a big crowd behind them. And as you can see, a lot of orange. It's almost appropriate for fall, isn't it? Everything is orange here in the Phillips Stadium. The three there for Wales, Mark Pembridge, the Sheffield Wednesday. Player as Wales get us underway, attacking the goal to our right in the first half. Wales who have never beaten the Netherlands. This is their fifth meeting. And the Netherlands have won the previous four. For a fast and furious start from Wales. So important to Vinnie Jones and to manager Bobby Gould that they make their presence felt early in midfield. That's one of the men they're going to have to try to close down. Vignon, the players having such a great season this year with PSV Eindhoven. Well, they'll also need a big game from Southall. I mean, he had the game of his life when they played that card. Some of the stops he made were just unbelievable. They'll be on highlight films in Wales for a good many years to come. And as we've seen in the last couple of uh, English Premier League games on Monday nights where we featured his club Everton. He's been in great form in uh, club football as well. And you're right there, Tommy. He could be in for a very busy night. This is a very snappy looking outfit that the Welsh team have on tonight, isn't it? And of course, the change because of the colour clash miles in their normal uh, first choice strip, of course, is red. So it would have clashed with the orange of Holland. And cut out that time. We even got there first. Bergham, of course, those two had such a great understanding when they were playing for Ajax before they both moved on to Inter Milan in Italy. Is Seedorf. It's gone through the centre forward channel. And a slight uh, miss kick there with the clearance. Oh, it's amazing going into the last game. I mean, the rowers were reversed. I mean, uh, Holland had the makeshift team. Wales were in good shape, but today, just Wales. It's really a patchwork of the regular team, Mike. Yes, Bill Kemp leaves the attack for the Netherlands. Missed the game in Cardiff because of injury. Newman. Now Koku. Holding that one in. Now it's getting it clear. Not too far, here's Koku again. I think one of the players that the Netherlands might miss today is uh, Bogart, the big man on the left-hand side. That could be a spot where Wales might try to do something. Seedorf taking the throw quickly. Well, we have the band anyhow. Everything's all right now. Once the band is struck up, we're in good shape. Netherlands, of course, today uh, strengthened by the return of Mark Overmars, who starts this game on the bench. Hasn't played since last December when he... Holland after that game against the Republic of Ireland and it was about a week after that that he broke his leg. 
as this one is played through and Dean Saunders can't get on the end of that through pass Van der Sar out very quickly oh nice positive keeper keeper reads this one from a long way out a nice little ball here and as I, I kind of expect that the left hand side of the field is where Wales look like they're going to go Mike because they're going to try out that spot that Bogart would normally be in of course, other good news for the Netherlands, besides the return of Mark Overmars, is that Patrick Kluivert back now playing first team football with Ajax and scoring goals. Of course, if he can return to form with 100% fitness, he'll make this uh, Netherlands side a very formidable uh, team for this Group 7, Tommy. Yeah, it certainly should, as you see. Going to see a little bit of a trip here, and uh, it's a battle of the sevens there. Uh, Aaron Vinter is the man who goes down, taken out of it by Young Bowen. That's Jason Bowen, who plays for Birmingham City. That's his second appearance today for Wales. Well, as long as the, the Netherlands team are in sync with one another, Mike, I mean, that's, that's where they've had their problems. I mean, you go back to Euro 96 with the Davids thing, and... Uh, there's still repercussions, right? And you're still doesn't talk to any of the Dutch press over it. We never really did find out exactly what happened, but there's still a little bit of recrimination over what happened in Euro 96. Good throw for the Netherlands on the far side. It's good camp. It's only got three players still manages to get clear. Now it's play back, Seedorf. It's judging that uh, pass. Newman, we'll see it off again. Uh, throw. The ball came off of uh, Clarence Seedorf to be taken there by uh, Mark Bowen. Oh, Seedorf has written a little piece of history for himself. The youngest player ever to make a debut for Ajax in the first team, 16 years of age. I don't think they'll get one much younger than that. Quite sure with Ajax, they've got so much uh, great young talent. 16 is perhaps about the right age if you're going to bring them in. Any less than that, the uh, problem. And could be a problem there for Neville Southall. He slid out of the penalty area, but he kept the ball in. Oh, and Clarence seed off the man we were just talking about. He was in on top of him. And it looked like that ball just kept going away from Southall all the time. He did a good job not to commit the foul by slipping out of the box, Mike. He would have been in trouble. Put it on that far side. Um, Pinter. The best of clearance is there from Van der Sar, but almost now to the feet of Newman. Showed too much of that. Vinnie Jones got there first. Southall there just caught in two minds. Now Cocker. Coverage. Going for Hearts into chase. That's an awkward one for Van der Sar. Did he stop it going for a corner? I don't believe so. I'd say it's a corner, but it would be interesting to see what the referee's assistant comes up with. I don't think he could manage to get it before he went over the line. All right, we're in uh, tune this time, Tommy, with the uh, referee's assistant. And Mark Pembridge has come across to take it. Lee Jones has gone forward, taking up a position, in fact, at the near post. Pembridge with the corner, curling it towards that near post, the back header. Van der Sar pushing uh, the ball clear, but also getting pushed himself. And that results in a free kick. Oh, I think Andy Melville is the man who's inside who's going to get... He's going to be called for the free, but it was a dangerous-looking ball and was floating there. You know, Van der Sar, he is capable of having a bad day, Mike. Psychologically, sometimes he drops himself out of games. I mean, he's a very, very good keeper, good technical keeper. He knows how to play the box, but sometimes he just loses concentration a little bit. Uh, he operates in midfield it's so dangerous down the left hand side and also for again a bit of trouble with his clearances that's the second one he won't be happy with 38 year old goalkeeper who made his debut back in 1982 Van der Sar how's that for cool play Tommy 
Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. I mean, he's good on the feet, he's good with his hands, he's good in the air, and he just took the ball away there. I mean, that was like a, a really good liberal player back there. Going forward that time by Meldiot. And Hartson. Pulled offside. Well, here we go, have a look at that, and uh, Hartson came uh, screaming in there. Van de Sar said, no way, Jose. Way through and looking for Dennis Bergkamp. Trying to get the Mexican wave going here in the Phillips Stadium. Good experience this time from uh, Southwood. Aaron Pinter. If you go back to the last game, there's an attempt at the wave, Mike. They're, they're really, well, they're starting to pick it up a little bit. If you go back to the last game, I mean, Holland had all kinds of problems with Wales until they took on the sub. I mean, Wales really played them very tough. And this is setting out to be the same kind of a game. Yeah. He's always winning the challenge in midfield. clear. Hartson steps down the player close to him. He whipped across quickly and safely taken there by Van der Sar. Van der Sar there finishing up past the penalty spot. He actually caught it inside the six yard box. More World Cup action here on ESPN. And coming right up after this game, we'll be bringing you the World Cup qualifier between Austria and Latvia from the uh, Tappel Stadium in Vienna. Being committed to bringing you all the best on the road to World Cup 98. But it's just something, a good point, Mike, the, the point you made about the keeper there. No referees ever call these steps on the keepers anymore. And I mean, they can take as many steps nowadays as they like. It's rising up. Hard and low. Neville Southall had the angles right. Michael Reisinger, who has never scored for the Dutch national team. Well, he's not talking to the press, but it hasn't affected his game any. Look at this. Little short hopper inside. Saddle does very well to keep that one out. That was a little screamer. Hartson there tangling with the uh, defender. Hartson saying he was held. He wasn't interested. Oh, he was clashing with there was the captain of the... Another one side, Frank De Boer. Oh, well played across and no risk taken at the back that time. Alan Nielsen, uh, who plays for Southampton, actually born in Germany. This is just his fifth appearance. All Wales was conceding the corner. Now, oh, Vimeo. Playing this one back. Great save there by Southall, the shot coming in from Arthur Newman. Two PSV players combined in there, and Vignon are able to get past Vinnie Jones, another corner. But some slack marking there from Wales, and they were nearly punished, Tommy. No marking at all on the corner kick, the took it short, get back out of the box, tremendous save. Vignon this time with a more conventional corner. It's in the near post, Wales get it clear. Look at that for a back bouncer, did it hit the fence? It hit well, the fence. You're going to see this, look at the short corner taken, nobody picks him up, he comes up, he has the free shot, this is a tremendous save, look at that, cross with the one hand, Soto starting off where he, he left off the last day, Mike. Seedorf, nice so one two there, Seedorf trying the shot, again Neville Southall comes up with a big save. Well, we said at the beginning he might be busy. We didn't realise he was going to be this busy. I mean, this is a tremendous save. Look at the shot by Cedar. Southall gets his boot to it. That was curling, it was dipping. And from the corner, Burkamp unable to get on the end of it. Now Cedar. That was an interesting matchup, wasn't it? Paul Kaplan Hartson was the man who came and took it away from him. The two of them played together with Arsenal in England. Here they are battling again. The Wales at the moment under a lot of pressure. Newman. Looking to 
switch play to that far side by Ziga. Aaron Hinter. Now Seedorf. And again, Neville Southall denies the player from Real Madrid for the second time in the space of some two minutes. Well, he's about 500 games played for Everton. Great experience. Look at this. Seedorf breaks in between two players, takes a nice little pass, gets the shot on. So it has earned his pay already today, Mike. who this week came out and said that he doesn't have many hobbies and he's not playing and training at Everton he tries to help the development of world football something that concerns him and we see uh, Jason uh, Bowen brought down oh, Vinny Jones and Neville Southall have something in common Jones has been sent out 14 times in his career and Southall has played for 14 years with Everton so 14 is a popular number. It will be Vinnie Jones. Driving that one to the far post, the header down. And off target. Well, coming in there was Gary Speed. Oh, Gary Speed picking that one up on the far post and we just got a shot there earlier. The whole bench, including the sub goalkeeper, is up. Look at them. There they are. They're all. I think it's a case of trying to keep warm, Mike, isn't it? They don't all expect to go on, do they? The Yaps then on the far side. And here on ESPN, we're at the Phillips Stadium in Eindhoven. This is the road to World Cup 98 from European Group 7. It's the Netherlands against Wales. And Netherlands going close. But Neville Southall denying Dennis Bergkamp. And as we come up to the 15-minute mark, it is still Holland nil. The Netherlands... One. Netherlands nil, Wales nil, but thanks to some great goalkeeper from Neville Southall. Oh yeah, the beautiful ball fed inside. Look at this, Bergkamp picks it up. Absolutely no defending being done at all, and Southall has to come up with a big save again. That's at least five. Realistically, at this stage in the game, it could be five nothing to the Netherlands. There it is, five shots on goal. I was counting them as I went along, and it could be five nothing, Mike. And Basar taking that one comfortably. It's Vim Yonk. Wales coming under pressure. This is Jason Bowen. Oh, they look terrible at the back. Yes, and here come uh, the Netherlands. Right across the face of goal from Bergkamp. Oh, Dennis Bergkamp's missed so much of the season with Arsenal because of injury. Missed the game in uh, Cardiff. Oh, he's putting on a clinic here. He's going to take the pass there nicely from Young. Young is the man who's the architect in midfield. Bergkamp breaks in and then he fires it. He fires it wide at the far post. Look at this. A beautiful pass right into the box. Slipped through. Bergkamp coming in on the right-hand side. He just can't find that post. Tremendous effort from Bergkamp. Saddle did well enough to keep the angle cut down for him. Well, Dennis Bergkamp and Vim Young had a great understanding and they were both playing at uh, Ajax before their transfer. We used to say that uh, they knew where each other was going to be without even having to look. They had those telepathic powers. And certainly uh, we've seen shades of it today that uh, they really are still on the same wavelength although they haven't played together now for some time. Oh, I think that a kind of partnership went sour when they went to Italy, didn't it? They never really produced the goods. Vim Yonk uh, was admitted from the Euro 96 squad. But now they're back together again and already starting to cause Wales a few uh, problems. Well, Wales here now get a free kick right on the halfway line. Oh, there's a bit of blood for you. Mr. De Boer has taken an elbow on the lips already. Yes, that's uh, Frank De Boer. The younger of the two uh, De Boer brothers, the twins, in fact. Yeah. Dean Saunders. Picked up there by Aaron Vinter. Free kick is taken. Yeah. You can hear the voice of Vinnie Jones. Vinnie! Vinnie! Come and take it! Come and take it! 
Bobby Gould up on the, his feet. Well, the instructions there very clearly to Vinnie Jones, come and take it. Down the lane he's telling him to throw it, he wants him to throw it down along the line. That's exactly where he did. Straight to uh, Martha Newman. Seed off. Oh, just happy to get it away from the danger area. Hartson is uh, penalised for the challenge on uh, Frank Nabor. Well, you could hear Bobby Gold having a go at Vinny. Of course, Vinny selected by the players today, and uh, apparently he takes it very lightly. He said on Dutch television that he might drink a few beers before the game, go out and play some football, and maybe drink a few beers after the game. You're right, Vinny. Enjoy it while you can. So he said that was the proudest moment of his uh, career. Selected by his fellow professionals. Now Seedorf. Here's Vignon. And just wide from York. Oh, Vignon plays his club football here. And Neville Southall, a wry smile as that one goes just inches wide. Oh, we're looking at the flat back forward that Wales are playing and it's non-existent. Look at the little run through Yonk with the shot. They're having so many great opportunities. Watch this, a little step over. Beautiful play by Bergkamp. And he lets it run on to Young, and Young doesn't get the whole lot of it. Just flashes it wide of the post. But do you see the way Bergkamp stepped over it? Yes, and again, it's that understanding between those two. He knew exactly where he was going to be, that he was going to be there backing him up. And the upstand winning that challenge in the air. And John's got there first, but now come home again the swift attacks causing a lot of problems for Wales and all that time playing it back to Southall Bobby Gold does a lot of shouting doesn't he Mike I mean you can pick him up all over the place he's shouting from the sideline and Vinny Jones he's making himself uh, heard on the pitch itself I feel that even coming in here, Mike, that Wales would have been happy enough with a draw. But certainly the way the things have gone in the first 20 minutes, they'd be gloriously happy to get out of here with a draw. You see North. Vinnie well, Jones is also close. He's been making a lot of quotes this week. And uh, just last night, in fact, quoted as saying that if Wimbledon can be in the top uh, four in the Premier League, and can beat teams that they shouldn't meet. There's no reason why Wales shouldn't meet the Netherlands as we see that challenge from our Andy Melville which results in this free kick. The five man more. Oh, this could be the biggest danger yet to Wales set pieces. Well, Vignoc is such a good striker of the ball. And of course, uh, we all know the exploits of Frank de Boer. So many options for the Netherlands. This one is played through and then laid back. Southall comes up with a big stop the first time, but not the second. And Dennis Bergkamp is on hand. Southall is beaten. Dennis Burkamp, the goal scorer. Oh, he makes the first good save. Look at the ball played back nicely. Southall makes the save and Burkamp puts it in. His 26th international goal for Holland. The free originally taken, coming up to it there. That's Wim Young. He gets it in short. It's going to be played back and the first shot originally comes from the ball coming onto it. Dennis Burkamp is the man who's going to run onto the end of it and he's going to put it away. He reacts much quicker than anybody else. So you had Young, the Boer and Bergkamp involved and the ball eventually ends up in the net. 26 goals. That's a nice international strike, Mike. Goal coming in the 22nd minute. The Netherlands won. Wales nil. Oh, we were just after getting through saying it could be the most dangerous situation that Wales has faced and exactly the Netherlands used it to perfection. defence were expecting a direct shot coming in from Vimeo and in the end 
that seems to be the move that came straight from the training field. Now Hartson. And that one down the line looking for Dean Saunders. Lost speed. Taking the trouble with that uh, pass, in fact. Body down by Bergkamp. Seed off. Seed off. Seed off looking for the penalty. Well, you can hear the reaction from the home crowd, which is predictable. Well, I think there is a bit of uh, there is a little bit of interference inside of the box. I'm not sure how clear cut it was. Koku was trying to pick out Seed off on the far side. Hartson playing that one through. And good cover in play there by Alan Vincent. And Michael Rising are also back there. And it was played behind Dean Saunders, and if anything, it seemed to put off the Netherlands defence. A long throw to be taken, no doubt, by Vinnie Jones. Looking for the flick on at the near post. And in the end, it's Gary Speed who had the final shot. Oh, he should have put it away, Mike. It fell to him perfectly, right in front of the box. Just outside of the six-yard box. He should have put that one in the net. Kit Simons was the player at the near post. Oh, I think the crowd are still whistling over that missed penalty call on the opposite end, Davey. Well, the Welsh with some uh, good vocal support. And we've come across the uh, North Sea. Even brought cheerleaders with him by the looks of things. Balding ones. And so, long clearance back there. Hearts on that far side. And quite a tussle with Yap Stam. That came off the Dutch player. Although the guys would have seen it differently. So it will be a throw then for the Netherlands. One of the interesting spectators, Louis van Hal, my ex-coach until the end of the season. And his destination, all reports that we believe will be the San Siro in charge of AC Milan. Bergkamp. Aaron Hinter. Young. Newman. Frank the ball. Natural, almost lazy ball forward from Frank the ball, but picks out his twin brother Ronald now rising up. And a good turn of pace there for Michael rising up. And in the end, Wells have to see the corner. Well, Reisinger likes to push forward. I mean, every, every opportunity he's getting, Mike, and I suppose if you have a weak part in the defense, why not try to exploit it? I mean, he had a tremendous shot earlier. Corner comes across. Well, let's get it clear, only as far as seed off. with the ball, coming this one back, Yonk with the shot, it's blocked. Oh, Vin Yonk that time, denied by the defender getting in the way of that shot, but Neville Southall at the moment must feel that he's at a, a shooting range, Tommy. Oh, he certainly must, I mean, he's getting no protection at all. I mean, and Yonk, who has had so many opportunities, he's only scored eight goals internationally. I mean, today he could have had three or four, and bear count. Well, you're going to see, is it offside call? That's a good call. Bergkamp is still onside. Bergkamp is now eight goals and uh, behind the leader in Holland internationally, Wilkes. So if Bergkamp gets eight more, he'll be the all-time leader internationally. You have to feel that his age and his potential. He might score those eight goals today, Mike, the way things are going. Pollard or Will certainly hope he won't, but you never know. I mean, he's had four good opportunities already. Here to come again. Control the ball, playing that one here. Keep it 
goes again, so Dean Saunders, the player chasing back. Winter, rising up. Zoom Yonk uh, playing that one through and Dennis Bergkamp is being obstructed. Well, you said he's, he's had a lot of problems this year with injuries, but certainly he looks like he's on song at the moment. Another opportunity for Jim Yonk from this free kick. Neville Southall trying to organise his defence. It's floated in this time. Hartson goes for the ball. And then a missed kick on the edge of the penalty area. Saunders. Take it, take plays take this it, one wide. Take it. Jason play down the line for Jason Bowen. Rising going to come across. Rising up. Played in a bit of trouble that time by Frank De Boer. But the Netherlands have got their way out of it so well. And now Ronald De Boer. Face there by Alan Nielsen, still Ronald De Boer, keeps the ball in play, and then uh, no power from the, with the cross. An easy one there for Neville Southall, but marvellous play that from uh, the Netherlands from one end to the other. And Neville Southall is not too happy at the moment with his defenders. No, you didn't have to be an expert to realise the way the man's feeling, and you can't really blame him. I mean, the ball walked in that time. You're watching the Road to World Cup 98 here on ESPN from the Phillips Stadium in Eindhoven. This match from European Group 7 where Dennis Bergkamp scored in the 22nd minute to give the Netherlands a 1-0 lead over Wales. With Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill. It's 1-0, Tommy. It could have been so many more. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, Netherlands have had so many clear-cut opportunities. But for Southall, it, it certainly would be an awful lot more. I mean, this defence is non-existent. Oh, here comes Koku. And again, Neville Southall comes up with a big save. Denying Philip Koku. But Southall's asking questions, and rightly so. Watch this. I mean, terrible play here. The ball knocked down right into the path of Koku. And look at Andy Melville. What is he moving away from him for? He gives him a clear opportunity. I mean, he took the wrong cut on him, Mike. Green Yonk with the corner. To the far post. They get it clear. Now Yonk again, floating this one in, and in the end just nodded back to Neville Southall. No wonder he's puffing and blowing Tommy. He's a bit of oxygen, quick. Nice, nice soft pedal back to him by Mark Bowen. Kind of took him, took the pressure off for a few minutes. Neville Southall, one of the real characters uh, in the English Premier League, of course. Uh, one of the games he came out at halftime didn't like what was going on in the dressing room and sat himself down at the post and spent the whole halftime sitting in the, uh, alongside of the goal. Yes, and despite all the money he's made out of the game, it was only 12 months ago that he got his first car. He used to go to training on his bike. Amazing man. I mean, he, well, it, well, he left a cup in the dressing room and uh, he went home, left the rest of them there to celebrate when he won the FA Cup. World Cup qualifying action here on ESPN. Tomorrow it's Luxembourg against uh, Russia. You'll be able to see that game here on ESPN. An important game that for Russia. Not only they've got to win, but they also need to score a few goals. And they come up against uh, Luxembourg. And as ESPN continues on the road to World Cup 98. And here at the moment it's the Netherlands. Very much on that road at the moment. Completely steamroller in Wales. And they've got another corner. Now, poor Vinnie Jones is having a problem in the centre of that defence, Mike. They're just dropping the ball in around and behind him. And he doesn't have a lot of support, so it's a difficult day for him. Vinnie goes across to take the corner. Now, swinger this time. Nobody challenging the ball for from the Netherlands. Here's Seedorf. Southall again comes up with a big save. Koku nods that one back. Seedorf. Goal number two. Well, Southall stopped two. He couldn't stop the third. From Ronald De Boer. Oh, 
Paul Soto was like a player that shell shocked out there, Mike. I mean, he had so many good saves here. Watch this. See that with the banger. Here's the ball nodded back out again. And there's, look at that, almost lifted the roof of the net from the board. See that with the strike from the left foot. The board's inside once again. Andy Melville is there standing like a statue. He doesn't make a move at all. And you've got to feel sorry for Soto. He's doing everything right, but that's terrible play. Oh, there was goal coming in the 33rd minute. He scored one in Wales. He's now scored one here in Eindhoven. It's the Netherlands 2, Wales 0. And here come the Netherlands again. This is Philip Koku. Bergkamp. Seeing this one up. It's three. I think the route is on. Jonk is the man who races through. Well, Vim Jonk there, and it is concert Neville Southall. Vim Jonk who plays his football here at the Eindhoven Stadium. And this time it was set up for him by Dennis Bergkamp. Oh yeah, he just hits it right to him and there's no place like home sweet home, is there? And he knocks that one right into the net. Look at this, Kaku with the ball across, Bergkamp lines it up. He knows where Jonk is coming. Look at that for a burst of speed. And there's the bulge in the old onion bag as Jonk puts the number three in the net. Tremendous goal, tremendous speed by Jonk. Look at no reaction from the defenders. He's in a foot race with himself and he gets there before Southall. Beautiful, beautiful goal. The goal coming in the 34th minute. The Netherlands 3, Wales 0. Oh, that's Young's ninth international goal. I mean, they're really on a, on a tally today. The board has scored in the last three games that the Netherlands have played in. They're bringing everything good with them today, Mike. This is a very, very tough look at Netherlands team I mean this man knows exactly what has happened here well, Bobby Gould silent at the moment we saw Gus hitting as we told you it was his 50th birthday yesterday this a belated birthday present but not only are they leading by 3-0 the thing I think that will please him Tommy is the way the team is playing together they really are playing as a team oh this is absolutely sparkling stuff I mean they're just stroking the ball around they know exactly where everybody's going to be on the field. The understanding between these players out here for international level is incredible. Koku this time with the cross. Melville with the clearance. Only as far as Seedorf. Mason Barry that time was pulled down. I mean, if you could get a team to play like this in the final of the World Cup, Mike, you'd certainly be doing some celebrating afterwards. Well, Bobby Gold knew it was always going to be a tough task with his Team, even in his first choice team it would have been difficult and just hitting mind you the expression on both men's faces you'd never know that the other man was 3 nothing up would you I mean Bobby Gold looked like he's in pain but uh, hitting well he still hasn't broken into a smile now Dean Saunders way by Yonk Billy Jones and Jimmy Jones there just pulling down Clarence Seedorf. And very, very calmly done there by Vinnie Jones. He decided to talk to the referee because uh, the Netherlands, in fact, had taken a quick free kick. I think he's talking to him, he's got him a yellow card, but uh, we'll be happy because it could have been another goal for uh, the Netherlands. Well, Vinnie Jones has made a, a, a career out of getting yellow cards and I mean he's having a disastrous day today. I mean Seedorf has taken him to the cleaners. Vinnie Jones looks like a second or third division player out there today Mike. He's just not fitting in with this international cast at all. Up to his defence though, uh, Tommy Nobody from Wales is really playing up to the form what one would expect certainly in midfield or at the back we haven't seen anything of Dean Saunders and John Hartson up front they haven't had any service so far and it's Van der Sar that time got there before Saunders well no matter how good you are up front if the men at the back can't get you the ball there's no point you playing I mean I don't think Mark Cranbridge has got a touch on the ball yet at all back there for Wales and he joins with the long throw Hartson there trying to nod that one down it wouldn't quite fall for Dean Saunders Michael Reisinger with the clearance. 
now speed. It's the ball back, Saunders. That's better from Wales. Speed trying to get behind and there's the speed in fact for Michael Reisinger that got there first. Wales though have got a corner. And Saunders who has scored goals throughout his career. He really hasn't had a sniff tonight so far. Corner comes across. Header at the far post. And a looping header there from Kit Simons from Manchester City. And he goes just over the crossbar. Oh. The picture there says a thousand words, doesn't it, Tommy? Certainly does. And well, ESPN's coverage of the Champions League continues on November the 20th. Match day five, and our live game will be the game from Old Trafford between Manchester United and Juventus, and we'll be following that up with same-day coverage of the game from Group D, AC Milan and Porto. As Hartson plays this one across, and Saunders! Well, he made that yard of space, and Wales have pulled a goal back. Van der Sar is beaten. And the small band of Welsh supporters at last have something to cheer about, Tommy. Well, you can see Hartson is the man who squares it across. Dean Sanders is coming, hits it on the left foot. Van der Sar gets the hand to it, but it just rolls itself into the corner of the net. Perfect ball from Hartson. Little bit of slack marking at the back, and look at that. Van der Sar is beating. He's just heading in the wrong direction, and Dean Sanders puts it into the net. Well, for Dean Saunders, his 20th international goal for Wales, his fourth of this World Cup campaign. The Netherlands three, Wales one. With now less than five minutes to go to half time. And time for the band to strike up again. Gus Hiddink will not be happy with these defenses, defenders that time, Tommy, because they really seem to go to sleep. He certainly wouldn't, and uh, I mean, hitting himself, he's gotten a big offer from Real Zaragoza, we understand during the week, but he's committed to coaching Holland through 98 until they, until they finished a run in the World Cup, but there's speculation that he might take it, Mike. He gave him away that time. And then uh, Wiles do exactly the same thing, giving the ball away. Wales, who have only made the one cup once, uh, the finals of the World Cup once, that was back in 1958. And they were what was termed then as a lucky loser. Disqualified by having to play against Israel after, in fact, they had been eliminated in their group play. And when they got to Sweden, they surprised everybody. They made it through to the quarterfinals, losing to Brazil by a goal to nil. A certain Pelé at 17 years old was the player who scored that goal in Gothenburg. Oh, and he says it was the biggest and most important goal he ever scored for Brazil. It was his first one in the World Cup final series. I'm sure you remember that. I'm sure the Welsh folks remember it too because had they gotten through that day, Mike, who knows? Bimyong with the corner to the near post. Ball headed clear. Another corner. Well, the whole squad is up warming up again. Once they scored, Bobby Gold told them all to get out and run again. On the corner for the Netherlands. Just a variation, he lays this one back. And the kick there completely sliced. He finished up as a good pass, in fact. Well, that's, the, that's the second time that Wales have been caught on that corner, Mike. And had the shot been a good one, they might have been in trouble. Netherlands, they're passing so crisp. They seem to be able to find their players with ease. They always seem to find them where they've got a yard or so of space. Ronald de Boer. Well, it becomes a whole lot easier, doesn't it, when you're leading 3 1. Those passes just seem to fall into place for you. Jim Young that time, giving the uh, ball away. Okay. Started the Netherlands on their way with the goal in the 22nd minute. 
two goals from the Netherlands in the space of 12 minutes has really changed the whole complexion of this World Cup qualifier. Right the ball. Okay. Well, the Westmen are trying to get their team going, Mike. They need all the encouragement they can get at the moment. I'm sure Bobby Gore will be looking to get this team in at half time and make a few uh, subtle changes. Certainly they've got to do something in midfield because the Dutch have really dominated, haven't they, Tommy? Oh, yeah, coming right down the middle. I mean, here's the path to destruction as far as the Netherlands are concerned. I mean, they've been walking right down there. Look at that, right down the middle again. Seed off, and that time the sliding challenge. The nice Clarence Seedorf. The Netherlands will get another corner. So more problems for Wales. They've had trouble defending these corners throughout this game. Well, that, that face there tells a lot of stories too. I mean, look at the perspiration coming off the keeper, Mike. And it's anything but a warm day here. Young then with the corner. The back header. Goal number four. And it's scored by the captain, Frank De Boer. I don't think he knew too much about it, Tommy. It came off the top of his head. I think he was surprised as everybody when he finished up in the back of the net. Certainly was. That's only his second international goal. And as you just pointed out, Wales have an unbelievable problems with the corner kicks. Look at this. He just nods it. He doesn't know where it goes, but it goes into the back of the net. Beautiful goal. Everybody's getting involved here. Look at Frank De Boer. He judges it perfectly, gets the header on it. Looks like a very pretty goal. He's going to tell you he knew exactly where it was going, but I'd be surprised if he did. The goal coming in the 45th minute. Neville Southall is beaten for the fourth time. The Netherlands four, Wales one. Well, once again, it was the path right down the middle, Mike. And they had to try to get it out of there to give away the corner. And from the ensuing corner kick to give up the goal. I think Bobby Gore's got to make a change at halftime. He's got to take somebody out of there. I think basically, so he needs to make about ten changes if possible. Well, I'm sure he'd love to make it, but... Uh, I think that Nielsen is having terrible problems back there, and so is Pembridge, the number two and three players. And that's certainly not helping Vinnie Jones's cause. The problem the Welsh team have got is that this Netherlands side is a very fast, very fluent in midfield, and they're really just bypassing the Welsh midfield. The best thing to do is lock half of them in the dressing room. That might be uh, the only solution that Bobby Gold might have. And as we go into stoppage time, at the end of this first half, he's got to face this corner from free kick from Pembridge. Takes it quite comfortably. And the Dutch supporters are doing to the Wales supporters just what they need, Mike. Look at the bright side of life they're singing to them. Is there a bright side to this? Seed off. Some of the defensive work uh, for Wales is straight out of Monty Python, in fact. Well, it's been a convincing first 45 minutes. Bergkamp opened the score and Ronald De Boer scored 11 minutes later. Within 60 seconds, Jomp made it 3-0. Dean Saunders pulled one back for Wales and then right on the stroke. There seems to be no problems out there today for them. There's Dennis Bergkamp and uh, Ronald De Boer. Two players who prepare to get the second half underway who both got the names on the score sheet. The Netherlands now attacking the goal to our right in this second half. Really touch for Edwin van der Sar, who didn't have too much to do in the first half. But it'll be interesting to see if Bobby Gould can change some tactics out there and uh, to make this Rolf side a bit more competitive in the second 45 minute period well if he can I think he's going to be a magician Mike because I, I really don't see a whole lot of hope for them not just because of the way they're playing but the way that the Netherlands are playing Seedorf denied there by the stretch body of Neville Southall who came out bravely Newman was the player who opened up the defence on that far side 
Charles Darthel, his 89th appearance today for Wales. Steedoff is having a tremendous game for himself, Mike. Not alone is he running the midfield, but he's also very much involved in the attack. The player who's got through a lot of work today is Vim Yonk in midfield. Oh, yeah. And a great game as well. Very classy looking. Benny Jones picking out Hartson. Gary Speed trying to play that to the far post. Nobody there for Wales. Well, I think the Netherlands' biggest problem now is, Mike, that they don't let up. You know, you come out leading 4-1 at half time. You're inclined to let up a little bit and... Uh, mistake or two at the back could cause big problems for them. They've got to keep pushing forward. John Hartson. Hartson driving that one across and met there by Frank De Boer. Colin Vinter that time with some nice control at the back. Seedorf lays it off. All played in there by uh, Ronald De Boer. Nobody making the run for the Netherlands. Yes, complacency could be the Biggest enemy for the Dutch team. One thing you're, you're sure of, so I mean that any team that has Vinnie Jones and his going to need to keep trying for the whole 90 minutes. It doesn't matter what the scoreboard says. Well, they're definitely playing their hearts out there. They don't bother reading the scoreboard, and you can see that the Dutch are saying, you know, they're complaining to one another a little bit, and that's a good sign, I mean, for the team. I mean, they still want to keep going forward. The board there saying the ball should have been played to me properly. We'll see if Gus Hilling does make uh, some changes oh, in the you, second half. When you look at all the coaches in Holland, you look at Advocate and Louis van Hall, and then you look over and you see van the Hilling on the bench doing the job for the, the national team, Mike. It, it's just, you know, a man who really is not such a big household name as like either of the two aforementioned play, uh, coaches. I think Advocate really wasn't uh, all that well known in... Uh, in the football world, not even too well known in uh, Holland until he actually got the national coaching job. I understand he just signed a nice contract this year for uh, this week for another two years, so he is job security for a while anyhow. Yes, of course, his team PSV currently top in uh, Holland this season. Moving again. Now uh, Philip Koku. Here's the ball. Stopped on his way through that time. Jason Bowen in the ball clear, but only as far as Frank the ball. A yonk. Seedorf. Look at Seedorf. Uh, Tommy, he's just so quick over those first two yards, isn't he? Yeah. His explosive pace. And I mean, even when the ball drops down, you say to yourself, he has absolutely no chance of getting to it. And the first boot that arrives on the ball is Seedorf. But I mean, it's very difficult to ride him off a ball too. I mean, he, he's built low to the ground. He's got a lot of bodies, lower body strength. He's trying to keep the ball in on that far side. We're going to throw two Wales. Saunders. Play through looking for Hartson. Now here comes Gary Speed. Time to measure his cross. One that swings away from the goalkeeper and Saunders gets on the end of it. Well he had to take the chance there of hitting it first time. It was just uh, a bit too high for him. Yeah, it certainly was. He had the opportunity and I'm just looking out at the boars out there and realising that both of them have scored, Mike. I wonder when was the last time the Twins scored internationally for anybody team? Any team? I mean, that, that's a good question to look up at the record books. I'm not sure I ever heard of Twins scoring on an international game before. Well, both teams have got uh, substitutes warming up. Pierre Van Hoydon was uh, one of the Substitutes warming up there for the Netherlands. Of course, he came on in Cardiff and uh, promptly scored a couple of goals. Van der Sar. Lee Jones, one of the players over the ball, as is Mark Pembridge. It's a two-man wall. It's 
Tim Ridge. They'll stop with him. Van der Sar is able to deal with it quite well. Oh, a nice left foot a drive from Pembridge. He gets it around everybody. Good drive on the ball, Mike. Takes that little short hopper in there. Almost finds, almost finds the keeper out. Pembridge, of course, he plays with a couple of uh, Dutch players. He plays with uh, Trussfeld and uh, Reggie Blinker, right? Yes, both. It's uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday after a great start of the season. Falling away a little bit in the English Premier League. We'll play through and the shot coming in, Southall was able to block it to deny Ronald De Boer. What a pass, but I mean it was just taken out of the air and put on the Boer's foot. And you can see the Netherlands are not pushing as many players forward as they did in the first half. I mean, in the first half they were swarming around that edge of the box. Not anymore. The speed. Larson. Swan is chasing through. It's Van der Sar gets there first. And then Weidonk. Still has his few uh, problems up at his club in Scotland with Celtic. Not quite seen uh, eye to eye with Tommy Burns, the Celtic manager. Well, if he scores another two today when he comes on, I mean, this is really going to be a, a huge scoreline. Well, Kemmer is there with a good challenge to stop Seedorf, and now it's Saunders. Perhaps they haven't got there first. Well, you can see that Bobby Gold did a good job at halftime, Mike. Wales are playing with an awful lot more commitment at the back. But, of course, the fact that Holland are keeping players at home is helping their cause. Well, as of course, it uh, caused a surprise 24 hours ago in Breda. And these two countries met in an under-21 international. Holland had beaten Wales in uh, Wales. Or last month by two goals to nil but Wales last night surprised them in Breda winning 1-0 Simon Hainworth scoring the goal in the seventh minute and Wales hung on for a victory so they were hoping that perhaps miracles would happen twice here's the ball good challenge there from uh, Alan Nielsen oh Nielsen stayed well with the ball at that time but here to come again rising up shot straight up in the air for the cocker. No worries there for Neville Southall. Newman plays it forward. Koku. Two players who play at this ground for PSV Iron Herman. Koku gets through an awful lot of work, doesn't he? Yes, he's a good player, Philip Koku. Some people are saying he could be the next big uh, money move from uh, Dutch football to either Italy or to Spain. A yonk. Bergkamp, yonk. Here's the ball. Winter. Well, Aaron Winter couldn't get his shot on target, but again, that marvellous by play with Yonk and Bergkamp which set up the chance oh great opportunity and you can see what he was trying to do he was trying to hit it off the side of his foot and trying to put it into that top right hand corner but misses by a couple of feet and the Southall's goal again is under siege it's just over 10 minutes gone in the second half down this near touch line and as well as now plans to make a substitution He's activity on the bench kept in on the far side it will be a throw then to Wales Wall 
World Cup qualifying action here on ESPN as we follow the happenings in CONCACAF when the USA entertain Trinidad and Tobago for the USA it's their second match in the World Cup qualifying and you'll be able to see that here on Monday on ESPN check your local listings four times and Seedorf that time his first touch letting him down just allow Mark Pembridge to get hit. Seedorf himself taking the shot. So the throw. Vignon taking the shot in the end. Which finishes up wide. Oh, it was an awkward looking shot, wasn't it? I mean, Vim Yonke was just completely off balance when he hit it. And yet, no, he still gets a good, uh, he gets a good bit of wood on it. Well, Mark Overmars has also been... Uh, Going up on the sideline, and there, in fact, is Mark Overmars. He's going to come on, and Aaron Vinter, I think, is the player that's uh, going to come off. In fact, it's going to be Ronald De Boer. So Ronald De Boer comes off. Mark Overmars comes on, and getting a tremendous reception. And there's also been a change for Wales. I think uh, Jason Bowen is the player that's come off. John Robinson's come on, Mike, wearing number 14 for Wales. Yes, John Robinson. He's already scored one goal in qualifying as we look at the confirmations of both uh, substitutions. Oh, we, we had two 14s uh, that we mentioned in the first half. Now we have two 14s pairs coming on. Overmars, as you said, Mike, you're right. That was his last game against the Republic of Ireland when uh, Netherlands qualified for Euro 96 at Anfield. December 14th, I believe. I'm sure you remember that, Tommy. For a long time. So you now with Mark Overmars on, it does give from Bowers to this Netherlands side. It goes over Mars, trying to go through the middle and trying to be picked out there by uh, Vimyonk. Yonk again. Pressure on the uh, defenders. Southall with the clearance. On the moment, counts in the Welsh half. Well, of course, that's what bringing over Mars does now. I mean, it, it changes the dimension. It gives them a wider dimension. Plus, it also brings a player onto the field, Mike, who's hungry to score. Because he wants to get a spot back in this team. So, he's not going to be coming here playing at half gear. He's going to be playing full out. Mark Overmars, this is his 30th international appearance. It's hard to uh, apprehend Tommy that he's still only 23 years old. I mean, we've been talking about it, it seems, for so long. Yeah, it seems like he's been around for years and years and years, but as you said, still a lot of miles left on those legs if he can keep them healthy. That would be the big problem for him. And see, does he have? has he lost any of his confidence? That's the big question that he has to really answer to everybody because that was a terrible injury. Well, certainly he's shown the flashes of his brilliance so far this season. And he's come back with I actually hasn't been rushed by Louis Van Gaal. And I'm sure that Gus uh, Henning is not going to rush him back and expect too much from him. And his international comeback. The idea of perhaps starting on the bench, easing back into the international scene slowly. There's Jonk. Vinter. And all the way through there, Neville Southall. One of you just joining us here on ESPN. This is the Road to World Cup 98. This is European Group 7. We're coming to you from the Phillips Stadium in Eindhoven, where Dennis Bergkamp gave a uh, hole in the lead. And from that point on, it was all one-way traffic. Goals from Ronald De Boer, Vim Yonk, and Dean Saunders pulling one back for Wales before Frank De Boer scored on the stroke of half-time. And here at the Phillips Stadium, we're just over an hour played now. It is the Netherlands four. Wales one. Oh, that was cheeky by Cedar, wasn't it? He tried to put it around the defender and then whack it, and it was just taken away from him just when he went to, to kick it. Full of confidence, Karen Seedorf at the moment. It's been a good move for him from Sampdoria to Real Madrid. Now Bergkamp. 
Playing this one in and touch on. Goal number five. Philip Koku gets the touch. It was set up for him by Dennis Bergkamp. And just the touch. Neville Southall is beaten yet again. Uh, Kaku hasn't scored many international goals, only seven appearances. This is going to be his second one, and he just barely gets a touch on it. Look at that, it just catches the inside of the post. Southall is stuck to the ground. You're going to see Bearcamp with a square across, and Kaku just gets a touch on the bike enough to change the direction, and he puts another one on the board for the orange. Look at that, everything goes in. Once things are going right for you, they all seem to break into the net, and this man scores his second international goal. Okay in the 61st minute it is now the Netherlands 5 Wales 1 and the victory here because very see as we see Holland now going to the top of this uh, group certainly the goal difference is going to start to favour them the Netherlands next game in fact will be away to Belgium Wales' well, next uh, game will be at home to Turkey. Newman. Came off the referee. Well, see him for a well shirt. Guys, he got. Well, it's interesting when you talk about shirts. I mean, they have the tradition of exchanging the shirts after the game, but Vinnie Jones says, no way, nobody's getting his shirt today. He's going to hold on to it. over the years have always been able to cause the occasional upset they did in the uh, cup qualifying last time they actually held uh, Germany to a draw in Germany Robbie Gould was hoping that uh, they might have caught the Dutch art today as well but it's not to be the case the Netherlands have really prepared well for this game. The players have arrived here in the good frame of mind. They lead by 5-1. Here goes Overmars. Plays that one square. And so close there to an own goal from Alan Nielsen. Oh. Well, it was Not only has he had to put up with shots from the opposition, he's also now given some anxious moments from his own defenders. Mars is the man who just squares it across. Nielsen coming, just strokes the ball and it misses the post. He's very lucky he doesn't put it into the zone there. But did you see how quick Overmars reacted to get to that ball? Now Frank De Boer has come forward. Knock with the corner. Wiles again having trouble getting it clear. Seedorf. Switching it wide. Knock. Again the ball just bouncing around that Welsh penalty area. There's nothing that Bobby Dortmund can do now. He stand there and watch Bergkamp. Dennis Bergkamp will travel for the corner. Start of play that time by Mark Bowen. Plays his football for West Ham. He hasn't had too many touches on the ball today, Mike. York again with the corner. This one curling in. Out of there straight up in the air from Vinny Jones. Oh, having trouble getting the ball clear again. Seedorf. Over miles. Garrett Taylor's warmed up waiting to come on for Wales. Not sure who they're going to take off, but he has many choices, hasn't he? There's a lot of players out there today that could be getting the call to come to the line. That would volunteer actually, Tommy. What an atmosphere, though. It's great atmosphere here in Eindhoven. This is a very good stadium, this Phillips Stadium. Very compact. It's not usually used for the really big matches. They either go to Rotterdam or to the Amsterdam Arena now, as Clarence Seedorf got caught there. See now on the ground rolling in agony. As that one does come off with Neville Southall. 
Well, Overmars trying to slip in again and slip it over Southall, but Southall stands his ground well. Seedorf is still staying down. Well, Seedorf, who plays his football in Spain with Real Madrid, just caught there by uh, Andy Melville. You can just see Andy Melville coming from the back. He's lucky he doesn't get a card on that one. I mean, he kicks the player. A lot of referees would have taken exception to that one. Kim Young, besides scoring the goal, has been very much involved in uh, setting up other goals as we see the substitution made now for Wales with Gareth Taylor, the player that's coming on, plays for Sheffield United, and John Hartson is the player that's gone off. One could say that uh, John Hartson has been a major disappointment. I mean, he really hasn't been a factor in this game, has he? He hasn't, uh, although he was the only man that looked like setting anything up and did set that one goal up. I mean, there's a lot of players haven't been a factor, isn't there? Kim Young. Ball hit to the far post. football this week here on ESPN FC 20 against PSV Eindhoven the league leaders PSV Eindhoven up against FC 20 who themselves are having a good season we'll be able to see that tomorrow here on ESPN as we continue our coverage of Dutch football I suppose the only disappointment for PSV is that they were knocked out of Europe Mike this year that, that's their, their big disappointment at the moment they're playing so well in Holland and Tyron Seedorf there, he's just letting the ball run out of play. He's had enough, he wants off. And Pierre Van Hoydonk is the player who uh, is going to come on. Seedorf really is in a hurry to get off. And Van Hoydonk isn't uh, ready to come on at this stage. Well, Seedorf took a nasty knock and uh, he knows there's a lot of games to be played yet both in the Spanish league and in the Dutch league so he's not taking any chances he's done his job for today so when Hydonk comes on Seedorf goes off <laughs> just thinking so I mean, I mean if you get Hydonk in the centre forward channel and you've now got Overmars and Koku on the flanks and you've got Dennis Bergkamp in the hole behind the striker what a strike force you've got oh unbelievable I mean the way Hydonk scored those two goals in Cardiff I mean two flashing one flashing header I mean he got so much power behind it and he has scored some brilliant goals for Celtic you got to feel that if, if Overmars can feed the ball into the middle Haidon can do a lot of damage too at the moment it's Wales trying to win the fix some damage on this Netherlands side Mark Cambridge he's got the near post with Vinnie Jones and the header at the far post from Andy Melville. It's too high. Andy Melville, who plays up there in the northeast at Sunderland. A couple of goals already in World Cup qualifying. They did come uh, admittedly though against San Marino. I'm not sure what he was complaining to the referee about, but he found a corner contention of some kind. Well, still uh, battling away making too many in rows now they play it wide he's been Saunders and Saunders there just obstructed as you go try to go past uh, Yap Stam oh, Saunders has so many moves in that bag of tricks of his and but the only way you can really stop him is to foul him but he hasn't got the supply of the ball today oh a flick header there and coming in at the far post Stam will get on the end of it was Kit Simons but there was just a little bit of a lightness that time about the uh, Dutch defence, Tommy. Yeah, well, I guess if you're leading 5-1, Mike, you're not going to be playing with the same intensity as you are if it was 1-1. And Kit Simons just snuck his way in on the back post. Had he gotten a touch to the ball, he probably would have put it into the net. What? Backheader. Southall. 
Well, it's not far from here, over in Zurich this week. There's been some FIFA meetings about uh, changes to the game, including the World Cup that we held in Asia. But one of the interesting uh, points that's been brought up is to ban the back pass completely. At the moment, players, as you saw then, can just head it back or chest it back to the goalkeeper and they can use their hands. As Marco Vermaas. Well, shades of uh, Marco Vermaas from uh, 12 months ago, Tommy. Well, he was racing against speed. I mean, Gary's speed, but he was using his speed to ward off speed and then he just clicks it over the keeper. Look at that. I mean, that's the Marco Vermaas we know. He just doesn't get it on the target. If he gets it over Southall, right down the middle, Mike, it's going to go into an empty net. But a tremendous run by Overmars. <laughs> Yes, when he was injured actually last year, Tommy was one of the leading goal scorers in the Champions League and, as well as the Dutch League. He just hit a really great patch of goal scoring. Oh, I remember that game we did against Malta. He had a hat trick in that one. And, I mean, he looked like he's very capable of scoring goals. Once he breaks across into the middle, it's a new departure for him, but once he goes right down the middle, he has so much speed. Nice again. One touch play by the team from the Netherlands, which is certainly appreciated by this capacity crowd here at the Phillips Stadium. Movement. Dennis Bergkamp makes it six. You can see it coming, couldn't you, Tommy? Oh, I mean, this was just delightful. There's five good touches on it, and now Bergkamp is only seven goals behind the all-time leader as he notches another one and makes it look so easy. I mean, they just split the defence wide open, couple of touches on the ball. Look at that little ball squared inside. Then when it's floated across into the middle, Bergkamp just runs in and he makes the touch. And if Wim Young is the man who's setting up the table, the ball squared across, nicely played into the middle and... Uh, Tremendous finish, I mean, you just can't ask for anything better than that. Look at that, you just sit back and you watch it and you marvel at how easy it is. And it's Bergkamp's second goal of the match. Set up for him there by Arthur Newman. It's his 27th international goal now. This is only his 51st appearance. It's now the Netherlands 6, Wales 1. Bergkamp again sliding through. Well, he would like to get on the end of that one. He would like to get the hat trick now. That's the one thing they'll be looking for him. That's about the only thing he has left to get in this game, Mike. Very good. Well, it's now a case of back to the drawing board. Well, Bobby goes through periods of very shouts and shouts and shouts. And then he has that stiff silence. He doesn't say a word to anybody. And a very impressive performance by the team in orange today. Well, you talk about that total concept of total football that uh, the Netherlands introduced to the world. They're really playing it to perfection today, aren't they? I mean, you see Newman coming up. He was the man who made the cut into the box on the far side, and he actually set the goal up. He's over Mars, releasing it quickly. Charles for Burkham. Well, Burkham was free, but be it. When Hoidong took it himself. Just going to say, chance for Burkham to get his hat trick because he was completely free. If Van Hoidong. Uh, well, it's just played behind the defence there. Flag stays down. Van Hoidong walks in. Sutton's coming out and he just makes a nice save on him. Here, yeah, Van Hoidong, who scored in uh, Cardiff with his first touch. He repeated the. Oh, he should have. Here. He should have, Mike. He should have put that one away. I believe he's going to just push it square. Bergkamp was screaming for it. Another shot coming in from a long way out and off target. Oh, just over, just under now, a quarter of an hour to play. Frank the ball got nicked. You're going to see what's going to happen here. Just coming in him and he, he does nail him. Sweden all right now and the lead in Holland rather convincingly in this road to World Cup 98 European Group 7 encounter at the Philips Stadium in Eindhoven where Dennis Bergkamp has scored twice Ronald de Boer, Wim Jonk and Frank de Boer have been the goal scorers for Holland 
Just one goal for Dean Saunders. And Philip Cockrell also getting his name on the score sheet in the second half for Holland. It's the Netherlands 6, Wales 1. And it's like an orange tide coming down on Neville Southall's goal yet again. And Southall comes up with a marvellous one-handed save. Keeps the scoreline at 6-1, denies Mark Overmars. Mark Overmars would love to score today. You can see he's the defenders backing back. Kit Simons is backing away from him and he just gets that rocket of a shot in. Gary Speed doesn't make contact but the keeper does. Yes, there of Tony Smith with me today here in Eindhoven. And we've both been enthralled by this game as Vin Yonk, who for my money has had an outstanding game, delivers this corner in. He's been a hand in so many goals, Tommy. Oh, I mean, he's just, uh, he's led out there. I mean, it's very reminiscent of what Rude Hollett used to do when he played the midfield for uh, the Netherlands. I mean, he's just spread the ball around. He has great vision. He's done everything that's been required of him today, and a little more. I think it goes across. Certainly the defence has looked a lot more stable with the return of Michael Reisinger. Certainly his pace at the back. Such a good covering player. As Wales come forward and shot from Dean Saunders goes wide and high. That's it, San Marino are enjoying watching this, Mike. They're one of the, the teams that the Netherlands are going to play very soon. The bus driver and the postman and the butcher. Well, they better prepare. I think there's a long day coming. Wales were able to get 11 past them in two games. But you know, if you go back to Reisinger, I always felt that if Ajax had to have Reisinger last year in the Champions League final against Juventus, they would have won it. I mean, that goal that uh, Ravanelli scored came from the spot where Reisinger would normally be, and I don't think it would ever have gone in. Oh, Mars. Robin Young. Tries to take the return there from Hoidon. Poking that one wide. Here comes Koku. What a move. Great move from Philip Koku as he plays this one in. And Wells concede the corner. I think those youngsters are happy. Philip Koku takes the corner quickly. Newman. And the shot. Goal number seven. And Burkham gets his hat trick. Well, it's a long time since Neville Southall has conceded seven goals. Well, I think this one takes a touch on the way into Mike. Bearcamp is the man who's going to fire it, but I believe you're going to hear the sound of it coming off of the fender. Maybe we'll get an opportunity to see it again. I believe it touches somebody on the way in. Let me see if I'm right. There it is. Yeah, it goes off of the fender, all right. But Bearcamp is going to get the credit for the goal. I believe it's going to come off uh, Vinnie Jones. Is Vinnie Jones the man that hits? It is indeed. Changes the direction of the ball altogether. Ends up at the back of the net. Bearcamp just lines it up, and Vinnie Jones is the man who pushes it home. I'm sure that Dennis Bergkamp is going to claim this one. Although certainly took a touch on the defender. Bergkamp though will say that that completes his hat-trick. It came in the 79th minute. It gives us a scoreline now of the Netherlands 7, Wales 1. Well, he started off being nine goals away from being the top scorer for Holland today, Mike, and now he has cut that down. He's only six goals away from it, and we still got uh, a little over 11 minutes left in the game. Giovanni uh, Brian uh, Brockhurst there and some words with Gus Hinnick he brought on with just about 10 minutes left to play the referee there just uh, stopping that move and giving Wales a free kick where well, I think they prefer the advantage there Tommy yeah they're probably well when things go bad they really go bad but they've done very well for this man's side today Jones. He's saying the wall's not back far enough. Just kick the ball, Vinny. Yes, it's just that, Tommy. One man wall and he's complaining. Well, the crowd here are singing We Are the Champions. It's an anthem that's usually associated with Ajax Amsterdam. It's a long way to go in this road to World Cup. This is only the second qualifier for 
Netherlands. And of course, another World Cup qualified from this group, and you'll be able to see that on Thursday when Turkey take on uh, San Marino. And of course, uh, the Netherlands will have to play both of those teams. In fact, Wales's next game will be at home uh, to Turkey. You can see uh, more World Cup 98 qualifying here on ESPN as Bergkamp just failed to get a touch that time. That could have been goal number four. Well, he certainly walked in behind everybody. He has the three of them already. And look at this, he just doesn't get the touch on it. You can see that if he gets the touch on it, could have been number four. Vim Yonk is going off and getting a great round of applause from his home crowd here in uh, Eindhoven. He's had a great game. Giovanni van Bronckhurst is the player that comes on with just about eight minutes left to play. The 21-year-old who made his debut against Brazil in a 2-2 draw back at the end of August. And this is just his third international appearance. Oh, that was a great story when he made his debut that day because Brazil also have a player called Giovanni and the two of them swap shirts. So he ends up with a Brazilian Giovanni shirt and a Holland Giovanni shirt. That's the Giovanni from Brazil who of course had such a great uh, year last year in the Brazilian National Championship with Santos now playing his trade with Barcelona. We're getting overshadowed by another Brazilian there. Yeah, certainly Mr. Ronaldo has put his best foot forward. Everybody's saying he's the next Pele. Of course, uh, Ronaldo, very well known at this ground. Scored a lot of his goals during his stay in Holland. Here at the Phillips Stadium, playing for PSV, the local side. Moving there with the back pass. When you begin to understand there's something about these players when you see this uh, Van Brockhurst he's played with Feyenoord since he was 10 years of age Mike so <laughs> he's had a long career already and he's still only a youngster he's 21 he's had 11 years with Feyenoord he's already a few free long service leave isn't he yeah, that's for sure Michael rising up Good one touch play again here goes Overmars, but not even Mark Overmars at his pace can keep uh, that one in. So that must be one of the most pleasing sights in Dutch football to be able to see Mark Overmars back out there in an orange shirt. Also after that horrendous injury, as he seems to take so long to recover. There's always that doubt, even if they do recover, Tommy, are you going to come back or are they going to come back to their very best form? I think Mark Overmars has already shown us this season with Ajax and even the little bit we've seen of him here today that uh, he's going to be back to his brilliant best. Well, I think the one thing that is really standing to him now, Mike, is that he has that turn of foot back. I thought the first couple of games I saw him, he was just a little bit slower. But I think that ball coming down the middle as we watch a tough tackle here from Garrett Taylor on Japstam. But I, I felt that that run that Overmars made down the middle and then the one that he followed it with, he is, looks like he's returning back to his best form. It's not only just a physical thing, it's also a mental thing as well, isn't it? Oh, psychologically, I mean, that's the big thing, is the confidence there. Bergkamp floats that one in. All chested back to Neville Southall. But there is the man in question. And I would say that he's answering a lot of questions, Mike. And uh, the tougher this road to 98 becomes, the more involved he will be. I'm sure the rest of Europe will be taking a note of this performance from the Netherlands. Themselves who made the quarterfinals in Euro 96 but were very disappointed with their overall performance although they went out to France on a penalty shootout a bit of a lottery that but of course that humiliation at Wembley at the hands of England and all the stories originating from the Dutch camp disconsent and everything I think this is the, perhaps the best answer of all time that they are back well, they've really answered them back today, and uh, I mean, this has just been a, a performance that, well, you just sit here and you look at it and you're happy to say that you saw it, because, I mean, at the international level it doesn't happen too often, and it's just something to be a joy to watch. 
Well, the band leader's going home, so at least the drummer is. Well, the Indians are starting to circle the wagons, I think, by the looks of things. Here come Wales. And just trying to play the ball inside that time. To Dean Saunders. Didn't quite come off. Here's Vinnie Jones. And Saunders again. He's got in there. Sure, Ryan Giggs is saying it about this time. Why did I happen to be born in Wales? Here comes uh, Reisinger, Burkamp. As we come up with just over three minutes to go. Well, the Netherlands picked out the right place when they decided to play this World Cup fight, qualify here at Eindhoven because stadium this season has seen a host of goals while Ajax has struggled to score, score goals at the Amsterdam Arena that's certainly not been the case here in the Dutch League of course our regular viewers would have seen uh, PSV put seven goals past Feyenoord here and then uh, oh, just over a week or so ago PSV also went one better they put eight past the uh, road JC here and we're used to seeing goals on this ground but we didn't really expect when we arrived so we need to see eight goals scored here in a World Cup qualifier maybe it's something that's in the grass I was going to say it was in the water but uh, you might be right it's in the grass and there it is you could transplant it around the world make a fortune so we well I'd say he's not too happy with whatever it is that's wherever it is Dong. Shot coming in. So close there to goal number eight. And Bronkhurst there shooting from outside the penalty area. Well, he has the keeper beaten on the far side and the ball just curves away. When it left his foot, it looked like it was en route to be in the back of the net, but it just kept curling away from the goal. Into the final two minutes. of the Welsh supporters and certainly the Welsh players are just looking forward to that final whistle. And the Saunders. There just might be something at that grass, Terry, Mike. Uh, I understand that the, the folks around here love to take grass from this stadium and uh, they like to have a souvenir of it, so maybe it is the grass. Well, we right, so here's Gary Speed. I think it's Burkhead who scored uh, a hat-trick here. Perhaps he could take some of it back to Highbury with him. The grass didn't help Vinnie Jones coming forward there. He doesn't get the ball near the target. Off of Newman. Lovely ball from Newman to his opposite number on the other side of the defence, Michael Reisinger. But it, it's a departure the way they're playing over Mars today, Mike. They didn't slot him out wide on the wing like they normally. They slotted him out almost like an old inside right. He's, he's one player off the wing and it, it has worked out very effective for him, hasn't it? Well, it does give him that opportunity that if he wants to go around the defender, he's usually got some space outside him. And uh, as we've already seen, injury or no injury, he's still got the pace. And so is this man, Michael Reisinger. Here is over Mars. Now Saunders. Pushing play to that far side. Here come Wales. As the 90 minutes is up there playing stoppage time and Bergkamp just fractioning offside. Then it's Bergkamp. He has scored a hat trick here today for the Netherlands. Well, you've got to feel that if Arsenal are going to make a run at the Premiership, Mike Bergkamp is going to be very much involved. So Arsenal will be very happy to see him performing like this. Well, just hitting, showing no emotion, but he must be absolutely delighted. Celebrated his 50th birthday yesterday and now sees his team. A comprehensive victory. Maybe we could get the band to play happy birthday for him, but it hasn't happened so far. Over miles. Trying to float that one, looking for the 
in this bird camp. A head back there to Neville Southall. Well, Neville Southall has been beaten seven times. But you'd have to say, Tommy, he really has been the hero for Wales, but that man's been the hero for the Netherlands. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, both men fit the bill very admirably. Southall made at least, at least 10 world-class saves that would have beaten a lot of keepers. So, I mean, it could have been a very, very embarrassing day for Wales, only for Southall. Well, there's going to be a presentation at the end of the game. Crowd staying right to the end. As we've now played over 90 seconds of stoppage time. Here's Vinnie Jones. Now speed. Vinnie Jones. And that pass went backwards. And that pass went straight to an opponent. Van Bronckhurst. Oh, Van Bronckhorst has looked like he's going to be a lively player too. No man is going to be fighting for his place on this team, Mike. Yes, and uh, one player who's not been used today, Roy McKay, who plays for Vitesse. He actually scored four goals last weekend in the Dutch League. He scored them, in fact, in 21 minutes. Wasn't a record. That record in uh, Holland is held by Marco Van Basten, who scored four goals in about 14 minutes. But uh, Roy McKay, who looked very impressive in Cardiff, Hasn't been brought on for this game. But the players who were selected have done the job for the Netherlands. Dennis Bergkamp has got a hat-trick. Ronald de Boer also scored. And a goal from Vim Yonk. The lone goal for Wales came from Dean Saunders. And in the second half, Frank de Boer and Philip Koku were the other scorers for the Netherlands. we we'll stay with us here on ESPN. When we return, we'll have our post-match wrap as we continue our look at the Road to World Cup 98. A comprehensive victory for the Netherlands. It finished the Netherlands 7, Wales 1. More after this.